This is part two of the 8.5 podcast, and this is all going to be math. I think it's about five math problems that we're going to go through quickly here. First one we're going to look at is a collision between a six kilogram, six kilogram fish that's going to swallow a two kilogram fish. Now the six kilogram fish is swimming at one meter per second when it swallows the two kilogram fish that is at rest. The question is, what is the velocity of the six kilogram fish after it eats the one kilogram fish. Well, what this is going to be is a collision that's going to be an inelastic uh, collision. So you're going to conserve the total momentum of the fish before and the uh, momentum of the fish together afterwards. So let's look at this. We'll go through this step by step. Momentum before they, they collide or before lunch, and the momentum, momentum after they collide after lunch. And now we've just replaced the word momentum with um, mass times velocity. Here's the mass of the big fish, the velocity of the big fish, the mass of the little fish, the velocity of the little fish at the start. Remember, it's at rest. And that's the before. Afterwards, they're together. It's an inelastic collision, so the 6 kilogram is going to be added to the 2 kilogram. It's as if they're one fish, and this is going to be their velocity afterwards, which is our unknown. So if we solve over here, we end up with 6 kilogram meters per second, and that's going to equal the total mass of the two fish together, 8 kilograms, times the velocity. And if you solve for velocity and plug and ch uh, chug it out, you end up with 3 fourths meter per second or 0.75 meters per second. So let's now say that the small fish is not at rest but it's actually moving towards the large fish at 2 meters per second. It's actually moving faster than the large fish. So let's look at this one. Um, because they're going in opposite directions we got to give one of them a negative, uh, one of the velocities a negative value. So we're going to say the small fish is moving in a negative 2 meters per second meaning it's moving in the opposite direction as the large fish. So let's do it again. If you take the, uh, here's your mass times velocity before, mass times velocity afterwards. Here's your large fish, 6 kg times 1 meter per second. That's the same numbers as before. Here's your small fish, and here's the new velocity right here. And once again, there's no difference in the, the after, because you're just taking the two masses, adding them together, and then multiplying them, applying them times the final velocity. Um, here's the big fish's uh, momentum. Here's the small fish's momentum afterwards. 6 kilogram meters per second plus negative 4 kilogram meters per second is going to give us 2 kilogram meters per second. We divide that by the total mass on this side and solving once again. Now we find that the, the final velocity of the both of them together is now only 1 fourth meters per second or 0.25 meters per second. Let's say it was moving at negative uh, 3 meters per second. What that then would do is end up with both fish would have the same momentum at the same time. It would be uh, it would be negative 3 meters per second times 2 kilograms, which would be negative 6 kilogram meters per second. And they both have equal and opposite momenta. And when they came together, they would actually come to a halt. Their final velocity would be would be 0. So... Here's another one where we do where the fish is actually swimming even faster, um, seeing it negative four meters per second. If we plug that in right here, you actually end up with the two fish going backwards. Here's the negative sign here. They're going in the opposite direction of the large fish's direction before they collided together. Okay, let's go to the worksheet and look at the um, worksheet uh, problems and see how those work out. Um, here's a bumper car question and it's going to end up being an elastic collision because the bumper cars are going to hit each other and they're going to bump off each other. So let's look at our um, look at our knowns. We have the first mass is 300 kilograms and that's the first bumper car. Um, the uh, mass of the two kids which is 200 kilograms plus the 100 kilogram bumper car to get 300 kilograms. They're going to hit a girl who's in a 100 kilogram uh, bumper car and she has a mass of 25 kilograms. So that's the second mass. The 
boys are moving at 10 meters per second. The girl is moving at 0 meters per second uh, to start. She's standing still. And after they collide, the boys continue with the head with a speed of 4.12 meters per second. The question then is, what is the girl's car, Melinda's car, going to be moving at? And it's going to be moving at a velocity. Uh, probably it's going to be moving backwards because it's going to hit a car and it's going to move in the same direction as the boys. So let's see how they did it. So here's our unknown. What's the second velocity? Now let's look at the equation. Here's the before the collision. Here's the after the collision. And these numbers all right here, you can see they use a zero, meaning at time equals zero, or something we say it, we say not, meaning at the beginning. If you notice, we don't do that with the masses because the masses don't change before and after. Here we're going to use an F, meaning their final velocity after the collision. So if we solve for uh, our unknown, we end up with this equation right here. And we plug it in. And we end up with uh, redu uh, doing all our multiplication. We get rid of this term. Uh, this term becomes negative 1,236. This obviously becomes 3,000 divided by the mass. And you end up with a, a velocity of 14.1 meters per second. And notice it's positive. So it's in the same direction as the boy's bumper car. She actually re goes from 0 to 14.1 meters per second in that collision. You may not want to solve the equation, solve for the unknown first. You might want to just plug it in here and then grind out the numbers and then solve for V2F, but that's just the way they do it in this book. I usually just plug the numbers in and then solve for the problem. Here's another one. In this one, they're, you're going to see they're going to lock bumpers, so that's an inelastic collision. So let's see how this one works. Our first vehicle. Uh, is 800 kilograms. Our second vehicle is 1,200 kilograms. They're both moving in the same direction when they hit. They're going to lock bumpers. We're going to look for the final velocity of both of them. So our this is our pickup truck, 1,000. I'm um, sorry, 800 kilograms times 13 meters per second plus 1,200 kilograms times 25 meters per second. Notice their masses are added together because it's inelastic collision and they only have one. They have the same final velocity. Solving for that final velocity with just the unknowns. Plug it in. Chug it more. And we end up with 20.2 meters per second forward. If you notice, the faster vehicle will lose some momentum. The slower vehicle will gain some momentum that's hit. Moving on, um, this is a uh, like an inelastic collision, except it's backwards. It's, a, it's an explosion, and you treat it like a, a inelastic collision. The um, it's like the cannon cannonball question. Um, when the cannonball shot, the cannon moves backwards a little bit. So we're going to see that with this. In fact, you're asked how fast does Charlotte move backwards. So. To start, uh, here's the mass of Charlotte, here's the mass of the spear, here's their initial velocity to start, and then here's the velocity of the spear afterwards. So your equation is going to look like this. If you look, it's just like the explosion question, um, I'm sorry, the collision, inelastic collision question, except it's backwards. Here they are together. Their velocity here is going to be zero because they're at rest to start. And then this is going to be the um, momentum of the of Charlotte. This is going to be the momentum of the spear. We're going to solve for the velocity of Charlotte because that's what we're being asked to find. We plug in, we chug, and we end up with negative 0.4 meters per second. And you notice that's a very small uh, velocity compared to the 15 meters per second of the spear. Um, and uh, another thing you should notice is that velo Charlotte's velocity is negative, meaning she goes in the opposite direction as the spear. Right. And that's just reiterating that point. So the question is, how does collision? This was our starting question for this section. How does conservation momentum apply to collisions? 
whenever they collide in the absence of external forces, the net momentum before is equal to the net momentum after the collision. And that's also true of the explosions also.